Pictures of Hollis Woods. Fourteenth picture. Christina. The old man framed this picture and hung it over the bed in my French blue room in our winter house in Hancock. The mirror on the opposite wall reflects the picture, so it's the first thing I see when I open my eyes in the morning. That and my tree figure from Josie. The tree figure wears the crystal beads Izzy gave me. They're too small for you now, Hollis, Izzy said as she looped them carefully over the sea, sea grass head. They're from my 16th birthday, but I always wanted my oldest daughter to have them. I tried to match the picture to the W1 in my backpack, but I couldn't do it exactly. First, there's a flag in the background of this one because it's Memorial Day, the day we open the house and branches for the summer each year. It's early in the morning, and we're standing on the porch steps with the sun sending beams of light across the river in front of us. But there are five of us in the picture instead of four. The old man looking a little grim. He's just discovered that Stephen left his bedroom window open so the snow drifted in all winter, ruining the wall and buckling parts of the wood floor. Stephen tries to look serious, but you can see the laughter in his eyes. Holly will paint it up, he said, needling the old man. She'll paint it green. That's her favorite color. They still argue, sometimes so loudly I put my hands over my ears. When they see me, they smile. It's all her fault, Stephen says, and the old man leaves o leans over to pat my shoulder. In the picture, Izzy stands in the center, a little taller than the old man. She's wearing a loose shirt in that blue that I love. Are you happy? she asked me, as I sketched us all later that day. Be happy, Hollis, because I am. I've never been happier. I didn't answer. Instead, I drew smiles on both our faces. I'm the fourth one in the picture. By the way, smiling, just a bit. I know I'm thinking of Josie, thinking of running here with her a year and a half ago. If I hadn't done that, I wouldn't have this picture, wouldn't have any of it. I'd still be running. Every month we go to Long Island to see her in her kitchen with Henry and the pelican and the tree figure she still carves, while Beatrice patters around fixing tea for all of us. Josie doesn't seem doesn't Josie doesn't remember exactly who I am anymore. She loves me though, I know that, and always reaches up to touch my cheek. Sometimes I wear her brown hat with the veil, and then I see the recognition in her eyes. Hollis, she says. You saved my life. Maybe she doesn't know why, but still, she says it. And I always tell her it was the other way around. And Henry? Ancient, but still feisty. That cat's as tough as you are, Stephen says to me. Henry looks at me, and it's almost as if he winks before he closes both eyes above a wide yawn. We speak the same language, that cat and I. I have a new last name now. It's Reagan. I love the sound of it. I haven't forgotten Hollis Woods, who wanted and wished, fresh as paint, a mountain of trouble. So I sign my drawings using three names. They all belong to me. Emmy and the Mustard Woman both like the idea of that. They show up regu regularly to say hello, nodding and smiling as if they were the ones who changed my whole life. I don't say anything. I know they're relieved to have me off their hands and settled, and I have to say, I can't blame them for that. I have to say, too, that I even smile back at them once in a while. But the picture, and why it doesn't match the first one, the W picture, it's because I'm holding my sister, Christina, six weeks old, in my arms. She looks quiet in the picture, contented, sucking on her thumb, but she's not always like that. And when she cries, we run to her from wherever we are. We stand over her bassinet, smiling at her, cooing. And Izzy always puts her arms around me. You brought us luck, she says. So there are five of us now. A mother, a father, a brother, and two sisters. A family.